Welcome back, lovers of sequential art. In my last video where I was talking about the objectification of women in comics, I made a promise that I would do a review of this comic. So today we are going to review Lazarus. Originally announced in 2012, Lazarus was co-created by writer Greg Rucka and artist Michael Lark. It takes place in a dystopian future in which family corporations seem to run the world and they have this system, I guess you could only describe it as kind of a feudal system where you have serfs and peasants and various hierarchies of people within each family's territory and people have various rights dependent on their status within that hierarchy. Each of the families appears to also have a form of genetically engineered super soldier that they call Lazarus, hence the title. Uh, and the one that we are following as the main character in the story throughout the series is the Carlisle family's Lazarus, whose name is Forever Carlisle. Although it was announced in 2012, the first comic was actually released in June of 2013, and it continues to be released to this day as of December of 2021. There is also a role-playing game that is associated with this universe, and there is ongoing discussions and development happening with Amazon to produce a television series, which would be amazing. When the reader is first introduced to Forever Carlisle, she is represented as being a member of the Carlisle family, one of the daughters of the patriarch of the family. But as the story unfolds, we begin to discover that Forever is not actually a naturally born human. She appears to be not only genetically engineered, but um, artificially created through genetic manipulation, among other things. I won't go into too much detail because I don't want to ruin the whole story, but it becomes quite a mystery initially when it's revealed how much forever has been engineered this of course is a huge shock to her because she was raised to believe that she was a natural member of the family this becomes a critical moment in the character's development and draws the reader into her development arc where she figures out who and what she is the series has received a lot of praise for the writing and the world building of Greg Rucka. Some criticism around the pacing of the story, but in my opinion, Greg Rucka balances both the political intrigue and the character growth and the introspective look at what it means to be human and what it means to be a family, as well as commentary on both our current systems of government and our social environment that we live in, as all great sci-fi does. And don't get me wrong, there is plenty of action in this comic as well. Now I have to be honest, since getting back into looking at comics, I unfortunately have acquired a bit of a Netflix mentality of wanting to just binge through things, which is why discovering something like Lazarus is so exciting for me because it's an amazing story with amazing characters, an incredible amount of depth, and there are a number of trade paperback volumes that you can get into. Unfortunately, when you're going to get into a story like this, where it has been so long standing, you can easily get a little confused about which comes first and what order to read things in. I would definitely suggest you go and look at the Wikipedia webpage because that gives you a breakdown. But basically, if you get the trade paperbacks, volume one, two, three, and four, that's your beginning. When you get to volume five and six, there becomes a little bit of a disruption to the whole process. Volume five just continues on from where volume four left off, but then there is a series called X plus 66 that comes after volume five before volume six. And there's a couple of other issues, just single issues, issue number 27 and 28, that come after X plus 66 and before volume six, of the series. Now, volume six, I don't believe is complete in a sense. It only contains three issues of Lazarus Risen, number one, two, and three. Um, hopefully we will get a full collection of Lazarus Risen one through six soon. The most recent issue, Lazarus Risen number six, was released in August of 2021. Lazarus Risen number seven has yet to be released. And if you go to imagecomics.com, you can read the very first issue of Lazarus for free just to get a taste and perhaps whet your appetite for more. My intention is to continue to explore a lot of the comic series and graphic novels that are outside of the mainstream a little bit. Now, Image Comics is a big company, 
but I feel like a lot of these series kind of fly under the radar. They get overshadowed by DC and Marvel. So if you want to see more content like this, like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of these kinds of comics. I tend to shy away from the big two, but occasionally may find something there that I really like and, and may comment on it. My real focus is on the more indie stream and the off the mainstream kind of comics. You know, when I started doing these reviews, I thought a lot about trying to make up some kind of interesting way of rating each comic so that you'd have a comparison that you can compare one to the other. But realistically, I think I can just give you my opinion and my observations. And Lazarus is a remarkably well-written, remarkably well-drawn comic that is in engaging and entertaining. It just grabbed a hold of me and wouldn't let me go. I just could not put it down. Now it is for adults. There is a lot of violence. There is some language that is inappropriate for kids. So I would recommend that you don't provide this to anybody that's less than at least 14 years old. You have to decide for your family what works for you, but yeah, for me, I would say 14 and up. I've got a list of comics a mile long that I want to share with you guys. Lazarus is just the first of many, so stay tuned for more, and I'll see you next time.